Happy New Year everyone, hope you all had a good break. In this video, I'll be showing you how to optimize your trading bot to achieve a 100% hit rate on any trading strategy. And I'll also be explaining why it's not always a good idea to do so. Then I'll be sharing some tips you can follow during your backtesting to avoid overfitting your strategy. So as usual, let's dive straight in. This is the NNFX bot that I showed you guys in episode 12. And it already performs pretty well on the default parameters without any optimization. It achieved a 80% hit rate over the last 10 years, and it's only got nine losing trades. One way to improve the hit rate is to look at the trade history and analyze the losing trades to see if they have anything in common. For example, we might see that most of the losing trades happen in October. So we can put an extra rule in our open trade function to require that server.time.month does not equal to 10. And so our bot won't execute any trades that month. We can also do things like excluding trades on certain days of the week by using server.time.dayofweek does not equal to dayofweek.tuesday. And I'll also exclude Wednesdays for this example. Now let's hit build and see how it performs. Great, now we're just left with one losing trade and we can see that it occurs on the 22nd of September. So as you might have guessed, we can also exclude a certain day of the month. By using server.time.day does not equal to 22. And now we've created the perfect strategy with 100% hit rate. But obviously introducing random rules this way is not very helpful and will definitely not guarantee that your strategy will not lose money going forward. But there are certain instances where you can introduce these type of rules. And one of these is for avoiding high impact news days. And let me explain why. With the current money management system, our take profit is closer than the stop loss. So we expect a 60% hit rate just from random market fluctuations. If we're expecting a high impact news release where the market could really go either way, then our trade essentially becomes a coin flip and the probability of a winning trade reduces from 60% down to around 50%. Which is why it's fine to program our bot to exclude certain days for news avoidance. And the basic thing to keep in mind is when introducing new rules, make sure that it's backed by common sense and has a rational explanation. Now let's talk about using the optimization engine in CTrader. It's a super powerful tool and it allows you to test thousands of different combinations for your parameters. For this bot, we have four indicators and if we test 10 parameters for each indicator, that results in 10 to the power of four combinations, which is 10,000 combinations. And if we added another two indicators, there'll be a million combinations. It's very tempting to throw all of these at the optimizer and just let it run overnight to find the best combination. But you should avoid this type of brute force optimization. First of all, it takes ages to run and your computer might crash before it even finishes running. But more importantly, you'll end up with a overfitted strategy that gives you a good looking back test but doesn't hold up in the real life. And that's because the more combinations you test, the more likely it is that you'll find something that works purely by chance. So just remember that less is more when it comes to optimization. What I would recommend is to optimize these indicators one at a time. So let me show you how I would go about optimizing this bot. First, let's try to find the best period for the Arun indicator. The key metrics that I like to use is the risk adjusted returns. So you can either use the Sharpe ratio or the Sortino ratio. Let's sort by Sortino ratio. And we can see that the pass parameter here is 25, which is the default Arun parameter. We can also scroll through these and see that the period 26, 27 and 24 also works quite well. This is what we want to see because it shows that the indicator is stable across that range of parameters. And you want to pick something in the middle of that stable range. So here I'll be happy to leave it on the default setting of 25. Moving on to the SSL period, this indicator is not as sensitive to small parameter changes. So I'm going to set it to test the parameters from 5 to 35 using steps of 3 at a time. And here you have a very stable range between 17 and 29. So I'm just going to set this parameter to 20 for now. For the whole moving average, it's even less sensitive than the SSL period. So I'm going to test between 10 and 100 with steps of 10. And it looks like the default period of 20 works best here. And finally for the Chaika money flow, this indicator is quite sensitive to small changes. So we'll leave it at steps of 1 and we'll test between 9 and 19. 
and you'll just get a stable range of 14 to 16. So let's just choose the middle of 15 periods. Let's rerun the backtest now with the new parameters and see how it performs. So with just some slight tweaking, we've managed to improve the hit rate from 80% up to 85%. And that's really the extent I'll go to with this bot. There's one more handy tip that I want to share with you guys. If we go back to the bot we built in the last episode with the break even and trailing stops, where we removed the take profit from half of the trade, you'll see on the equity chart where the yellow line shows the growth of the balance, and it has these shadows around it. These shadows contain very valuable information about your strategy. The shadows above the line is how much profit you're leaving on the table because it means the trade moved in your favor by that amount and then came back before it closed out. So if you see these shadows above the line consistently, you might want to look at your exit strategy to see if you can capture a bit more of those profits. The shadows below the line show how much the trade moved against you while in the trade. So it's a hint that you might want to see if you can improve the timing of your entry signals. As always, please hit the like button if you learn something new. And feel free to leave a comment below or hop onto our Discord server if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.